Hi there. I'm going to demonstrate Transolution for you today. Since your time is valuable, however, I'm just going to demonstrate the basics only. If you like what you see, then feel free to download the trial version at hexadime.com. Transolution is a localization product that allows programmers to easily translate their Visual Studio.net solutions into foreign languages for international markets. The product consists of two separate applications a Visual Studio add-in that programmers will use to extract all the ResX strings from their solution into a single file, and a separate standalone application that a translator will use to translate this file into the target languages. Once this translation is complete, the same add-in is then used to import the translated strings back into the programmer solution. So let's start by taking a look at the sample solution now in front of us. I've already downloaded and run the Transolution installation program and I'm now ready to translate my application. The first thing to notice is that on the existing Visual Studio Tools menu, there's a new item that was added by the Transolution installation program. This item is simply called Translate, and when I click it, I can see that there are two items on the menu, Outgoing and Incoming. Well, it should come as no surprise that when I want to send my strings out for translation, I'll choose Outgoing, and when I'm ready to import the translated strings back in, I'll choose Incoming. So let's start by clicking Outgoing, and you'll see the first of two Outgoing dialogs pop up. This dialog is now requesting the name of the Outgoing file, which is just the name of the file that's going to be loaded up with all the strings in your solution. You can call this file anything you want, but by default the name of the file is simply the name of your solution with a .trn extension. Okay, so at this stage you can click Help if you want, which brings up the Transolution Help System, but let's just click Next to move on. So now we arrive at the second and final outgoing dialog, and you'll notice the name of the Transolution file from the dialog we just came from is in a read-only text box at the top of the dialog. If you want to change this, just click the previous button. The rest of the dialog is made up of three sections, the first containing some translation options, but this isn't important for the sake of the demo, so we're just going to stick with the defaults for now. You can read up on these options in the online help, which you can activate by pressing F1. So let's just skip straight to the second section just beneath it, which contains all the projects in your solution. This is where you'll select the ResX files containing the strings you want translated. Basically, the section is just a scaled-down version of Solution Explorer itself, so it contains all the projects in your solution. Only those branches that lead to a ResX file appear, however, and by default all of them are selected. So if I expand any branch, you can see that it leads to a ResX file. You can select or deselect anything you want here, but normally you'll want to select all of your ResX files. You would only ever deselect a file if it contains strings that you don't want localized. In any case, by clicking any parent node, all nodes beneath it are automatically selected or deselected accordingly. Know that this section is also color-coded, so you can see, for instance, that when something isn't selected, or it has any child nodes that aren't selected, then it appears in orange. When it's black, you'll then know that all of its children are also selected. So using this color system, you can easily see what's selected and what's not. You'll find this feature useful whenever you collapse any of the nodes. In any case, the online help explains the color system in complete detail. The third section is where you'll select the target languages for the translation, and this is pretty self-explanatory. So let's scroll down and select, say, French, and then add to move this over, and then we'll select German, and we're done. Also note that you can size both the dialog window itself and the splitter that separates the files to translate section and the languages section. In any case, we're now ready to start outgoing translation, which is done by clicking the Proceed button. When I do this, Transolution is going to extract the strings from every ResX file you selected in the File to Translate section and load them into the sample.trn file. Your translator will then be able to translate them into the languages you selected, which in this case are just French and German. So let's click the Proceed button and see what happens. You'll notice that finished very quickly and without any warning messages, but in your own solutions, you may encounter some warning dialogues along the way. These can alert you to various issues, such as strings that are completely blank, or which have leading and or trailing white space, and so forth. The warning messages will notify you accordingly, and you can then continue or cancel at your own discretion, depending on the warning severity. In our case, though, there were no warnings, so our sample.trn file was successfully created, and the dialog message in front of me is telling me that. We can now send this file to our translator, who can translate this file using the Free Translator's edition of Transolution. This can be downloaded from the Hexadime website. 
So let's take a look at the translator's application, which is called TransView. Note that this program is also included in the developer's version of TransSolution, so a copy is already on our machine. We'll therefore fire this up from the Windows Start menu like so. And if we now go to the File menu, click Open, and select the sample.trn file we just created, you can now see all the strings in your solution. And you can also see the target languages we selected during outgoing translation, French and German, so it's pretty easy to then translate these strings by simply filling in their columns. I won't go into all the features available in TransView, but as an example, your translator can see your Windows forms and user controls in context. That is, you'll notice in the far left-hand column, you can see an icon for some strings. This appears on any row where the string originates from one of your forms or user controls. If you see the icon, in other words, then you can activate the form view feature for that row. For any row where the icon doesn't appear, such as these rows down here, then the strings for these rows don't originate from any forms or user controls. They usually contain message strings originating from your other ResX files instead. We want to see form view in action, however, so if I move the active cell to one of the rows containing an icon in the far left-hand column, and I then click the View menu, you can now see the Form View menu option, whose language is now French because I'm in the French column. So, by selecting this item, or alternatively I could have pressed Ctrl R instead, a dialog pops up showing the form that the string originates from. You can see this form on the left, and on the right, your translator can then translate its controls. This environment is basically the same as the Visual Studio Forms Designer, but your translator can only change the text, size, and location properties of each control on your form. For size and location, however, the programmer must grant permission for this during outgoing translation. So, for instance, if I move down to the phone field, you can see that this now appears in red over here, indicating it hasn't been translated yet. As soon as I enter a translation, however, it now turns black, indicating it's been translated. So your translator can fill in all the fields and when they're done, just press OK. You'll then return to the main grid and you can see that the phone field has been filled in automatically. So your translator will then fill in the remainder of the grid, either directly from the grid itself or by using the form view feature. There are lots of other features that your translator can read about in the online help and there are various safeguards as well. For instance, if I pop down here, you'll notice that the string has a composite formatting item, the zero with the curly brackets in this case which means that your translator must include the same item in any translated string. So if they omit the item, which I'm going to do here, when I then attempt to leave the cell, the program won't let me. You can see the error message indicating that the zero with the curly brackets is missing from the translated string. So these types of safeguards will prevent serious problems from occurring later on if your translator neglects to enter the required composite formatting items. Okay, so once your translator has completed filling in this grid, they would save the file and then send it back to you. You'll then import the strings back into your solution using the same add-in as before. So let's jump back into Visual Studio and proceed to the Translate menu again. But this time, instead of choosing Outgoing, I'm going to choose Incoming. On the first Incoming dialog that appears, I'm now going to enter the same sample.trn file, but for the sake of this demo, I've already translated most of the strings in this file. I then click Next and we arrive at the second incoming dialog, which, as you can see, has the same ResX files and languages selected during outgoing translation. Now all I have to do is click the Proceed button, and the program will then import all the strings from the sample.trn file into your solution. So let's try that. Okay, so you can see that a warning just popped up, indicating that a string wasn't translated by your translator. This is just a warning only, and will appear for each string that wasn't translated. In your real solution, though, the message won't appear at all if your translator completed the job, but we can ignore this message by simply clicking the Do Not Show This Message Again checkbox. You can also choose to cancel if you want, which will roll back the entire incoming translation. For this demonstration, though, let's click Do Not Show This Message Again, and then OK, and a dialog now pops up indicating the translation is complete. Let's close this dialog, and the first thing to notice is that the Visual Studio output window contains a complete log of every translation change and any warning messages. You can review this information if required, or even save it to a file if you want, or you can simply close the window if you don't need to retain this information. In any case, you'll also notice that in Solution Explorer, we see a bunch of new satellite ResX files which TransSolution added, and any existing ResX files would have also been updated accordingly. 
So your solution has now been translated, and we can see this by running the sample program. Let's just fire the program up then, and we're now looking at a mock-up of an employee record form in the default language. This is just the sample solution included with the package itself, so the form doesn't actually do anything, but we can change the language. So if I now click French down here, you can see that all controls are showing up in French. So your application has now been effectively translated, and as you can see, this system makes the entire job of translation not only extremely easy, but also very safe and highly cost effective. That completes the demonstration then, so feel free to download the trial version which you can try on your own solution. Thanks for watching and happy translating.